Now we're going to talk about light mass. And what light mass is, it's basically a renderer that allows you to bake out your lighting, your shadow maps, as well as indirect illumination and even ambient occlusion, which is pretty cool. So in this scene, I only have one light. I call it sunlight, but it's actually directional light. It represents my sun. Now, you can see the way well, my lighting looks. It's pretty dark and the shadowed areas look unrealistically dark. Let me change my intensity to about 18. When I do that, I'm going to end up breaking the lighting. And you can see on the top left of the uh, viewport, it says in red text, lighting needs to be rebuilt. That's telling me that my lighting is now broken. And in order to see the lighting correctly, I'll have to rebuild the lighting. So to do that is actually pretty simple and straightforward. Just go up to the build menu and choose build lighting only and this will build your lighting. We also have a lighting quality option here so we can choose our quality level. I'm going to be using preview for now because it's the fastest uh, quality level to set it at. So while you're doing test renders you want to keep it on preview so it's faster and easier when you're ready to render out your final environment to ship it out to your customers or your players audience or whatever then you want to switch to production and do a production based uh, light bake on your uh, on your environment so I'm gonna go ahead and build lighting you're gonna see it takes a little moment to do that and this is light mass doing its thing it's basically uh, pre-calculating all the lighting it's gonna bake it out and render it for us and when it's finished it's automatically going to update the lighting for us and we'll be able to see what we have. Now depending on what your settings are for light mass, this is a process that can take a really long time or it can be relatively fast. And Now you can see my shadows are uh, baked in and were calculated. They look decent at best but not that great. You also notice that my image looks pretty dark. Areas that aren't being affected uh, directly by sunlight are very dark and almost pitch black. Now you can see my mobility type. If I come in here and change the mobility type of my light, like let's say I switch out from stationary and change it to something like uh, static, um, it's going to go ahead and break my lighting. So there we go. I switched it to static and it broke the lighting. I'll just switch it back to stationary. I just wanted to show you the kinds of things that um, could cause lighting to need to be rebuilt again. From now on, I'm just going to use the shortcut for uh, light building instead of going up to the build menu, which takes a little bit longer. I like using shortcuts, and I strongly recommend using shortcuts in whatever programs you use to make you a lot more uh, efficient and faster at your workflow. So, what I can do here to make this um, to make light mass uh, change the amount of indirect illumination is I can increase the indirect lighting intensity which is my default set to 1 and what indirect lighting is it's basically the phenomenon that happens in the real world when light photons bounce off of the surface of objects and end up hitting other objects so if I increase my indirect lighting intensity to something exaggerated like 20 and I bake out the lighting again you can see we have a very brightly lit scene we have light bouncing off of our very light colored floor which is kind of like a whitish gray color and we have light bouncing off of these red seat cushions and bouncing onto the uh, the back cushions so we have light bouncing around quite a bit and it's a little bit well it's very much overblown if we set that back to one which is the default setting we're not going to have a lot of indirect lighting intensity so areas that are shadowed and not being hit directly by lights are going to be dark. I'll go up to the world settings and that's this little earth globe button up here and that's going to open up my world settings. Now the world settings is where your uh, your levels light mass settings are located. So it's very important to gain access to your light map settings and know where to find it so that you can adjust these settings. Now we're going to go ahead and have a look at this. So you want to go down to light mass, expand light mass settings which might be uh, collapsed and now we have all these different settings. Now I'm not going to go over every single setting because uh, realistically uh, when you're working in your in your game and in your levels you don't want to change every single setting. Uh, most of the defaults should actually be left alone uh, in my opinion. However there are some key settings that are going to change the look and feel of the lighting in your scene and those are the settings that I want to go over and show you. 
So here we have the number of indirect lighting bounces. This is a pretty important setting. Basically what this tells light mass is how many times are the light photons that are hitting objects in our scene going to bounce off and hit other nearby objects to spill the lighting and brighten up the scene. So if I set this to 1 and render it out, uh, we only have one light bounce, it's not going to be very bright. Now let me set it to 0 just to show you what happens when we don't have any uh, light bounces. So at 0 light bounces, if we bake out the lighting, what we're going to see is that our shadows are literally pitch black. And this is kind of the way that light behaves uh, more when you're talking about a scene in outer space. When you look at, for example, images of, say, satellites in orbit or uh, something like that, or, or the moon or, or planets and things like that, usually the side that's not facing the sun or the star is going to be almost pitch black. It's very hard to see because there's not a lot of indirect illumination bouncing around in space. There is a bit, but not as much as, say, sunny day um, on the surface of the Earth. So what we want to do is we want to keep those indirect lighting bounces to around 3. Works out pretty well. Then we have this environment color. and By default, it's set to black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it. I'm going to uh, make the environment color similar to the color of the sky in my scene. And this is a great way to get a good starting point for good light bakes out of light mass with indirect illumination. So what's going to happen now is the environment color is going to affect the shadowed areas. So now you see this shadow between the couch and the floor and even the shadows and the lighting around the dark areas of the couch have a little bit of a hint of blue. And this is more realistic uh, this is more realistic behavior of what actually happens in the real world. If you were in a similar setup where it's the middle of the day and say you're on a rooftop lounge in downtown LA and, um, and you're sitting around these couches and things like that, a lot of the shadows and stuff are going to be brightly lit. They're not going to be pitch black. That's because of the environment color of the sky and the surroundings starts to spill over on everything, brightening up those dark areas. So if I increase the environment intensity, which is the next parameter just below the environment color, I can actually overdrive and push the environment color even higher. So I can make it very intense. In this case, I set it to 5. That's a very exaggerated value to set it at. So I'm going to leave it at 1. I also have a diffuse boost, which is set by default at 1. Uh, for some scenes, like this one in particular, it might be a little bit too low. So if you're finding that your shadows are a little bit too dark and uh, areas where direct lighting just can't get to, you might want to increase this diffuse boost. So if I exaggerate it and increase it to something like 10 and render this out again, you're going to see now I get something that has a lot of indirect illumination. And what I'm getting now is color bleed, which is perfectly fine and is actually what you want. In the real world, the way that light and surfaces work is when light hits, say, a red surface like this, because the surface is red, it's going to reflect red. Therefore, light that bounces off of here and onto other nearby objects or characters or whatever's nearby is going to have a hint of red, uh, of red lighting. And this is what happens in the real world. If you go out on a sunny day and uh, you put a bright red colored shirt next to a wall and the light's hitting that shirt, you're going to see a hint of red color bounce up on the wall. So that's pretty cool. We also have ambient occlusion. So right now we can see that the crevices and the spaces in between the pillows and the couch, those little tiny uh, tight spots, basically are not very dark. But if we turn on ambient occlusion, ambient occlusion attempts to approximate um, something that happens in the real world where objects or surfaces that are very close to each other tend to occlude light. Less light can get in there and therefore it's darker. So you can see with ambient occlusion turned on, and it's off by default, by the way, with it turned on, we get this nice darkening and these little crevices and little nooks and crannies in between the different meshes in our scene, which can help uh, things look a little bit more realistic and can help out with your lighting overall. So that's the uh, ambient occlusion. And again, it's off by default. So I'm going to take that diffuse boost and knock it back down to the default, which is 1.
we can see everything starts to get um, a little bit darker, which is okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you indirect lighting with our light. I can actually go to my directional light, and I have a parameter here under light uh, called indirect lighting intensity, by default set to 1. And this controls that global illumination from the sunlight. So I'm going to change it to 10, and that's going to break the lighting, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and rebuild lighting, and now we can see we have a really nice brightly lit scene. We have the red color from the couch bouncing off and onto the different pillows and things like that. We've also got some pretty nice uh, well-lit shadowed areas, so they're not pitch black or too dark. And if we look at this in the lit mode, we can see with the textures and everything looks pretty cool. So 10 might be a value that's too high. You might want to lower that. And the idea is to come in here, tweak these values like the environment color, environment intensity, diffuse boost, as well as the indirect lighting intensity on your lights, and just manually tweak and change things until you get a result that you like based on your scene. So if you're doing like a horror game, you might want to keep these settings low so that you get more contrast in your level and it's a little bit darker and spookier for players. If you're doing something like architectural, uh, real-time architectural visualization um, or a really brightly lit scene outside, like let's say a sports game that takes place in the middle of the day or a racing game that takes place in the middle of the day, you might want to play with these settings and increase the uh, brightness in your scene using the diffuse boost, the indirect lighting intensity, and that kind of stuff.